Hello there. Thanks for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and look at this 1965 Beach Boys concert poster. Holy cow! Holy smoke! Holy crow! Holy whatever! What a what a great poster! Now I've blogged the Beach Boys 1963 large green concert poster and called it the best Beach Boys concert poster ever, and I meant that. But you know what? If you want to parse out ingredients, this is the best looking. Beach Boys concert poster ever made. You're probably already thinking that as you look at the as you look at this image, how awesome it is. I hope that day glow color comes across on the video screen. Let's just look at those blue ocean waves and the Beach Boys in that bright, you know, what do you call that orange day glow color? Um, it's just a fabulous design with a picture of them and a bunch of song titles, a big cardboard globe poster, tour blank, 22 by 28 inches. It's a masterpiece. It's just, boy, Globe really outdid themselves because creating this ocean and then to have, you know, the sky with the seagulls up there and stuff like that, that was above and beyond what Globe normally would do in designing posters and these waves and everything. They just really, really knocked it out of the park with this one. And it's just, uh, so it's just the cat's whiskers, no doubt about it. Just fabulous. There's the Beach Boys picture right there in the middle. Very important ingredient of a great concert poster. Of course you have the mastermind Brian Wilson on top and then you have Dennis and Carl and then you have Al Jardine and Mike Love. Kind of ironic that Mike Love, the lead singer, is the only one without his mouth agape <laughs> for this particular photo when it was taken. And of course they're wearing their matching uh, pinstriped surf era shirts which certainly plays into my wheelhouse. I really like that. Now this is interesting. This this globe um, this globe poster is a tour blank, and of course up here at Charlotte, North Carolina Coliseum, uh, July 14th, Wednesday, printed in. But this this whole thing had a lot of flexibility as a tour blank. It's really a fascinating study. The venue information. Um, well, let me let me show you actually another example of this poster from Raleigh, North Carolina, obviously also down south. The venue information, of course, is different. But inside that first orange stripe. This one says W Kicks Radio, W K I X, and the Charlotte copy I have here plugs W I S T in Charlotte Radio. And then you get to the bottom of the poster below the ocean, and this one has a big old area, a white area down there with room enough for a photo of um, an opening act, and three opening acts listed, and there's even a plug for the local Honda dealer, sort of a contest, it says brand new Honda given away free by Open Road Honda of Durham, but no Dayglow down there. And on this poster, of course, you have the orange stripe down at the bottom with the opening act. So no picture, but they're in a day glow stripe, which is pretty cool. And that's the Romans. By the way, the Romans were a Florida garage band named after Tommy Rowe. Remember him, 60s hit maker, Sheila and Dizzy and stuff like that. But Tommy Rowe signed them, basically the Romans, to a contract. I should hold them a little more up here. And um, then toured with them. So that's why they call themselves the Romans in, the, in homage, I suppose. But the Romans also opened for the Rolling Stones and the Animals and Roy Orbison and stuff. And uh, so they were very accomplished musicians. And as a matter of fact, their drummer laid down his sticks after a while and went on to be a singer-songwriter. His name was Bertie Higgins and he had a top 10 hit in the early 80s called Key Largo. Yeah, you remember that one. So, okay, so enough for the opening act. Here's the Beach Boys in Raleigh. Six months earlier, in the same city, also in Charlotte, um, the Beach Boys played with the same tour blank. So let me show you that one. And it, too, is a little bit different. Look at this. Um, let, me, let me get it first off on the viewfinder. Five of the six songs there three on either side, are different than the poster I'm holding right here. Five of the six songs are different, and there's no opening act. Look at that. It just boringly ends at the bottom of the poster. Wow, so that's quite a significant difference. That's really, you know, that's just, um, that's really funny. So, anyway, so speaking of song titles on the poster we have here, let's look uh, quickly at what we have, song title-wise, which is sort of my favorite part of any poster. Honda, of course, was their hit Little Honda. Interestingly how they dropped the word um, Little and blew up the name, and I wonder if there was sort of this attempt to tie in the whole tour to local Honda dealers like we saw so overtly on the Raleigh poster. But um, anyway, it was a sort of a sort of a hit from the previous fall, a Honda was. And then below that you have Not Help Me Honda, but Help Me Rhonda, <laughs> their current hit, which had been a number one record, which is obviously fabulous. And then Kiss Me Baby, below that, was Help Me Rhonda's B-side. And on the other side of the picture, with these three song titles, let me straighten this out a little bit, we have Please Let Me Wonder, 
which is another B-side to the hit before um, Rhonda, and that was uh, Do You Want to Dance? So the B-side was Please L Let Me Wonder. And then we have Warmth of the Sun. That was yet another B-side to the previous hit before that, Dance, Dance, Dance. So it's almost like the Beach Boys felt they wanted to keep their dance records off of this for some reason and just go with the meaningful B-sides. And Warmth of the Sun, of course, was written right after JFK was assassinated. And then finally we have Keep an Eye on Summer, which was a 1964 album track. And that's sort of appropriate because it's right in the middle of summer 1965 with this poster. And um, getting back to the venue info for a second, very interesting to note that um, tickets were available at a hat shop. Look at that, a hat shop. Wow. And a hi-fi camera store. <laughs> That's really neat. Just not enough record stores at the time. So, July 14th, 1965, guess what came out this week? Capitol Records released California Girls as the next Beach Boys single. So, my goodness, you've got this killer poster knowing that California Girls was released this week. Just so special, so cool. By the way, they were touring with Bruce Johnston in the band because Brian Wilson, the studio rat, didn't tour with them much by this point. And Brian Wilson, this week, was back in a Los Angeles studio beginning work on the song Sloop John B and the album Pet Sounds. So, wow, the pop world would never be the same again. So there you have it, just a fabulous Beach Boys concert poster from the summer of 65 with lots of history, lots of great graphics, and I hope you enjoyed it because it's killer. Thanks a lot for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.